YouTube. Here with the Wooded Beardsman, and it's Christmas holidays. We're out on virgin snow. A little bit more than I was expecting. Should have maybe brought snowshoes out. We're adventuring. I put, uh, put about 10 pumpkins out here just right before the rifle season. And nothing, nothing much touched them. There they are still. We're going to take a side trip here because we have two spots to check out. Uh, one of them's on the way to the second spot, so we'll scout it first. See if there's any beaver activity, snowshoe trails, squirrel tracks, and then uh, make a decision about our plan. down here somewhere. Oh. It uh, oh, looks like bad news at the bushcraft camp. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a bunch of trees fell on the bushcraft camp. On it? I, it looks like it. I'm gonna go have a peek. I made a trail. So we had a, we had a pretty big windstorm for our area a couple weeks ago and um, Oh, I just missed it. Like, it hardly matters because the bushcraft camp fell in on itself anyways. It needs some TLC, but uh, there'll be some, some stuff to clear out here. So there's a series of swamps here. And the beavers sometimes are living in one and working in all of them. Um, and sometimes they have a lodge in each one. So we've had a mix of cold weather and warm weather, so we have no idea what the ice conditions are going to be. We're in the not water part right now. You see the lodge up against the bank straight in front of us there? Yeah. Yeah. And then this is like a little backup pond. You can see the channel where the water runs. It's not even open right now, which means that there's either not a lot of water or they've plugged it all up upstream. This is where my parents dog broke through the ice. <laughs> Remember that? Had to haul her out. Feedback. I just see some uh, old spruce boughs in the water, and an old fox track track crossing the pond. You can hear the water coming underneath here, though. Jeremy, go first. Yeah, yeah. Send the heavy guy first. That's what I brought the. Uh, that's what I brought the ice saw for. Well, if I fall in, it's early, so we can still go home. These are made by. Oh, it's good. Good ice here. Is it Fish's yeah. ice saws? It's an American. Got one lodge over oh. here. Have See that? Another lodge the way here. There it is. about four or five inches. There is a pretty good amount. They brought our skates.
you haven't uh, if you haven't used one of these before for ice fishing and trapping um, they work really really well as an ice chipper and then as an ice saw you might have seen me use them in um, some previous fishing videos I can cut a big 12 inch hole in the ice uh, once I get the blade through it takes less than a minute to cut that big hole and if you use an ice screw you can put the ice screw in and then cut a circle around it and just pull the ice plug out hey yeah chimney okay he's got the big ice saw as one of his survival tools I'm listening for some weird sounding ice that may be a little bit hollower than normal and that would indicate activity. There could be other animals living in here like otter and muskrat, mink. Yeah. Could be anything in there. Yeah. But we're not going to be able to chop them too easily if it's something else than the beaver. I don't see a feed bed. And oh, it doesn't sound any different anywhere along here. Do you think that might be a uh, porcupine track? Oh. Or an otter? Otter, I was thinking. Yeah. Because it's pretty... Flat. Yeah, it's hard to tell with the snow on it. Could be a porcupine or an otter. See how smooth it is? Yeah. See how there's... If that's pee right in the trail, that's a good sign of a porcupine because they just pee while they walk. It goes over here. No, it goes behind. Behind and away. Oh, well, maybe that'll be a track to follow later. Oh, something got uh, there's some sign over here. It's just all fallen bark. Oh no, yeah, it is. See all the bark bits on the ground. Now, if we look up the tree, up, 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 the. Uh, tree has been eaten by a porcupine. Porcupine track! Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, there aren't a lot of good hair trails, eh? No. I was thinking <clears throat> if we trap hares, the pound is the way to go. We'll bait them. Alright, spot number two, here we go. This end of the swamp doesn't have a trail cut yet. Just a uh, barely discernible footpath that I use in the fall. So I brought a new cutting tool I want to try out today. If we end up making a spot, I'm going to recut some of this trail because it needs it. And because this is the bigger of the swamps, it's kind of the better spot for uh, duck hunting and beaver trapping. It's a good trail to walk for grouse hunting. I just flushed one actually a few minutes ago. It's good to have all your gear contained. That's why I'm keeping some stuff dry. In my uh, princess auto bucket and a duffel bag, a canvas bag, a cooler that seals up pretty tight. Oh. So we're going through this one sideways just to try and keep all the snow off. A couple of traps in there. Snow shovel's pretty critical. Uh, and uh, Oh, traps. What else? I brought some snares. Um, some snacks. Oh, a couple products to review. Why not, eh? Um, I think you've seen me use this sled a million times. But it just never dies. Highly recommended pelican sled. Yeah. 
good a really good mod on this sled. I put boat cleats on the edge here, which make perfect tie-down lashes. It's the only reason everything's staying put. Anyway, I see my canoe. I see the swamp. I see old hair tracks. Probably not that old. This new snow just fell within the last few hours, so um, any of these tracks could be brand new or a couple days old, hard to tell. No trees fell on my canoe, so that's good news. And that's interesting. This, uh, oh, this is where. What the heck? Where's that water going? It's not going. It's not going over the dam. It's going underwater. Look right there. It's going under and around and out. And that flow is keeping this open. There's no tracks here. I don't see any beaver tracks or uh, otter tracks. The lodge. Well, I'm gonna say it's out there, but I don't. Can't even see it right now. So this spot's quite a bit, quite a bit bigger. Um, you can see the dam now. Got some grass growing on top of it, and. There is still a heron nest out here, which is cool. I don't know if they're using it, but we'll have a little snoop around. swamp and does not appear to be any beavers here so we have to decide about if we're gonna try going up to the next one which isn't very open uh, or just focus on hares snowshoe hares a couple squirrel traps I brought some uh, rat traps for squirrels make a little camp spot Back to the first spot. <laughs> Where's all the beavers? After a lengthy discussion. Yeah, I left uh, home with an awful of beavers up there. All <laughs> kinds of them. Nothing here. Yeah, that lodge is empty. You can see Chris's tracks over here. He went and checked that side. And I went over this way and checked this side. There's an old bank house, but it's not being used. So there are definitely beavers maintaining this dam. Uh, it's just a mystery as to where they're living, so we're going to try back at that original lodge. Just dig the lodge out and see what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, so my electric cutting tool. Christmas Prezi from Terra. Which was a very good pick. If you've been watching this channel, you know that I've been wanting to try one of these out for a long time. And uh, I got it for Christmas. So thanks, Tara, again. Little 10 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch bar. Um, this runs on my cordless batteries. I've never used one before. Um, and I wanted to because for sure, um, I could charge these off of a small solar panel system and my uh, EcoFlow Delta as an off-grid setup 
And I think it's gonna be way quieter than my gas chainsaw. Holy, Princess Auto, famous for their tight lids. Um, and uh, save me a lot of labor sometimes. So this is gonna be a trial run. There's a whole bunch of trees down from that windstorm we had between here and where we're going back to check on that first beaver lodge again and figure might as well cut them while we go right let's do this all right Fast! So fast! And it's just like somebody said, you run it and then it just stops. You don't have that chain continuing to go, being a hazard. I like it. I like it already. And a lot of the time, when you've got a little sawing to do, it's just a little sawing to do. When I have a lot of sawing to do, I have a big saw for that. Um, so let's uh, continue down the trail and cut as we go. All right, this one's a little bigger. Let's see how we go. Cold weather electric saw. So what I can tell you about the bushcraft camp is that it's a really sweet spot and a really nice setup. Most of the work 
is actually in cutting all these logs. So even though it's fallen down, I still think it's worth fixing the back up because that's way less work than building a new spot. So uh, the beaver trapping is a bust. There are no beavers here. We, we punched a couple holes. You can see that on Chris's channel. Uh, put the camera down. Um, nothing. So we are going to set some hair pounds and some squirrel traps and see if we can catch some small meat. is to tie down every fifth or sixth rafter. So you do a new one here and then there. And then I've got a long rope. Uh, if you've seen me repair this before, you know what I did is I laced it. So I laced them all together by running a rope through. So then each one is tied to each other. What happened before is they all slid off together. Um, but if I've got them tied down every fifth or sixth one, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to move in theory. I'm going to show you some Christmas items because I need one of them right now. I got the um, Christmas 2021 Nomadic Adventure Box and um, this super handy canvas bag with a reflective inside. Um, that was one of the items. The other item that I want is this cola tree it's a hand towel and um, one of my favorite winter hacks is to always have a dry towel so when your hands get damp before you put your gloves back on wash them up well this is like a super super feeling towel anyway I'm gonna keep that inside my shirt pocket keep it dry and then use it to keep my hands dry okay this is a little bit of 
Winter Campfire 101. Um, so we're on the snow, so that's a condition, that's a challenge. And then also there's snow on top of a lot of our fuel wood, which is also challenging. The first thing I do is kick my snow aside or shovel it away. And I'm going to make a base of branches or logs. And I'm gonna build my fire on top of that. So first layer is the base. And for my base, I'm just going to use enough of these dead branches to keep my fire, my first fire. I have a shovel. I already shoveled it a bit. You want to dig down the dirt? Well, I wasn't going to go right down to the dirt. We're going to get a big enough fire that it's going to melt this out anyway. First layer is the base. Okay. You can do more base if you want. Next up is your tinder. So I'm using the famous paper birch. That's going on top of my base. You could also use fine twigs, um, which happens to be my next layer. So these are pencil sized or smaller and I've got a big double handful of these. That's going on top of my birch bark and I'm making sure that I have somewhere where I can reach in and access that birch bark light it on fire or if I'm starting a tinder bundle on the side where I have room to put it in underneath all my tinder so that's my third layer I guess and then what we're doing next you're going to use your slightly larger um, fuel wood. Now you can log cabin this, you can do parallel fire lay, you can do this part however you want. I'm going to do a teepee. These are all dead standing spruces and balsams that I harvested from around the site here. It's very grown in so what happens is the small ones that can't compete for the for the light, they end up just dying, dying where they stand, and providing good firewood. I don't know if you can hear Chris in the background. I heard a rat trap snap. Then I heard, heard him squeal like a child. Did he really? You'll have to go to his channel to find out. Now the biggest trick about a winter fire is you have to have all your fuel wood ready before you light it. Because you're going to have to keep it going for a little while until it establishes itself. Once it's established you can burn ice cubes on there just about. So um, what I want to do is to shake out there's a pile of branches under here. I'm going to shake those out. And uh, this tree that fell down, I'm going to knock down some of that, shake the snow off of it, and then get it all ready to throw onto this fire. And then we will spark it up. So the idea here is that if we uh, get a good fire going, we'll be nice and comfy. Also, it's going to throw some heat. We're going to be able to dry out the tarp that was here, dry out the piece of canvas that was here, um, dry out uh, the platform so we have somewhere to sit. And then we should also have uh, a good, good spot to cook up whatever we catch. So. I think I already mentioned the plan is to build a hair pound and set a few squirrel traps. We're going to use rat traps, which are pretty much your best trap for squirrels. Although in the Ontario Trapper's Handbook, they say that a killing snare is the most effective squirrel trap, which, uh, has not been my experience. I set a killing snare 
in my woodshed, which is a favored hiding place of squirrels. And I never caught a squirrel. I set a rat trap in a box, and I think I've caught four squirrels plus a pile of mice in that, which is good because it keeps them from infiltrating my house. The rat trap for five bucks is an excellent investment. They last for years of use. They will catch all kinds of small rodents. Are also an effective weasel trap. If you have a weasel problem in your hen house, probably the best way to catch that weasel is to figure out how to make a box trap and put a rat trap inside there with a little bit of liver or, or chicken. Anyway, I'm gonna get a big pile of fuel wood here and then we'll fire this up. Limp it with the axe. We'll uh, buck it up with the little saw here, which seems to be working like a charm. Beauty. So now we've got a big pile of junk to burn. And then hopefully we can get these logs burning for some lasting fire. one's not really quite dry, but I'm going to put it into the teepee. I think the birch is probably going to it. Yeah. Well, well, we'll give it a whirl. So we have um, all this junk to burn, but we also have pre-cut wood from before it's just been sitting out it got a little bit mushroomy it's got some snow on it but some of it might go here's a good piece here's a good piece that feels dry this one might be all right that's cedar that's for some fancy kindling later <laughs> that's a kindling log yeah you got to save that one up that was too heavy that's full of water oh it's not terrible these little ones are probably all Dry. All right. You want to fire it up? Here go. There we go. What have I brought for? What have I brought for lighters? Oh yeah. There we go. Butane. That makes it a little easier. Smelt steel with this. Yeah, now it'll go. Put them on the teepee, thanks. <laughs> that was the missing link. Well, I found a good piece here. I know, but it looks too good. <laughs> That's like for the bed or something. It might be a bed piece. Yeah. There's another bed piece. Yeah. <clears throat> Up on the side. That one's junk. Almost gonna burn. That birch bark is just about to catch. It's never burning slow. You can't make a pretty fire and make a big one? Yeah. Sometimes you can make a pretty big one. I think this one will burn. This stuff will burn, I think. Yeah. The trouble is the lichens hold a lot of moisture. Uh, but, you know, once it's, once it's going, it'll burn. For sure.
these are the ones that we want to get lit for a good long fire. Long fire, a log fire, a long log fire. Watch it doesn't jump so high that it burns our air for it. This is my, my lacing rope for the roof that I want to thaw out before I use it. I'm going to tuck that in somewhere where it's not going to burn. Really, uh, really like that little saw uh, for cutting firewood. But I think I still prefer an axe for limbing. And I love the sound of chopping. Sounds like work getting done. wanted to do a couple of shout outs while I'm chopping. Um, one is to uh, Mick, huge channel supporter. Just wanted to say thanks for your continued support, Mick. Um, I wish I'd been getting more videos out than I have been recently, but uh, I'll keep doing what I can do. And I really appreciate your uh, kind words and your channel support. I uh, wanted to shout out uh, a couple of people. I don't, I don't want to name names of people who are having a hard time with their health or are cooped up, but I've definitely heard from a few people who um, have expressed appreciation for uh, getting these kinds of videos out because it gives them a chance to Get outdoors when they can't get outdoors. So I keep making these videos for you guys too. And uh, I've been pretty fortunate this year to um, have some great uh, channel sponsors. I'm sure you uh, are doing any kind of a good job at sponsoring or promoting, then I'm sure you know who they are. But appreciate the uh, support there as well.
Yeah, I'm just gonna have a little look at what else is in my bag of tricks. So this bag is just to keep the snow off that saw. And then this bag is the gear bag. Dragonfly, dragonfly bushcraft knife. Brought a survival tarp. Brought a, a bag of mixed rope and paracord. This is what I'm going to need shortly. Uh, snares, brass wire snares. Make a hair pound and set it. Here's a couple of never been used rat traps, brand new. Um, yeah, these work great for red squirrels, weasels, mice, as I was mentioning earlier. Oh, this handy new bag from Nomadic. Oh yeah, the Olay MC. Do you have one of these? Wooded Beardsman? Yeah. Yeah. It's got like, it does all the things. It's very, uh, very Christmassy. Red, green, purple. Ooh, color changer. These are, um, this is like a Christmas thing, I think, but uh, my kids love these for reading lights. And uh, the battery lasts a pretty long time, so that's handy. Of course, I have a couple of other O-lights. The one that lives with me, the Paron 2, the headlamp. What I wanted to get at was some Christmas chocolate. And maybe a snack. And then we're going to eat some wild food. Spar gloves. Always a good idea. Because these ones are soaked. I'm going to try and dry them out of the fire. This is my uh, all the time glove combo, which are merino wool liners. They're no good on their own, um, but if you buy a pair of work gloves that are one size too large for you, then you can wear them with the merino inside and generally makes for a pretty comfy glove and you can still still do a lot of stuff with your hands. They're thin enough that you can still be pretty uh, tactile. Um, but these gloves, in the winter, it doesn't matter what you do. They always they always get wet. They always soak right through. So it's good to have a spare pair. Or uh, even if you have some kind of a, a third glove layer over top to keep you dry. Or just have a good fire and take some breaks dry out. I also wore a wide brimmed hat because I was hoping it would keep the snow from going down my neck and so far that's worked. Except for when you push that tree on top of my head. <laughs> then I got some snow. That's where you need a hood. Yeah. I get it on top of my head too. Yeah well, I got a hood <laughs> but can't wear the hood and the hat. <sighs> got all the steam coming out of my uh, yeah. gloves. It's a lot of moisture. It's always fun to clean something in the winter. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, there's no great way to do that. No. Gloves. That's why I always bring a... Did I lose it? I just need cleaning gloves. Hope I didn't lose my, uh, my brand new dry cloth. Oh no, I shoved it in my pocket unless that's my tooth. Oh, there it is. Dry your hands on there. You want some squirrel in it? Yeah, might as well. I'm sure it's washable. <laughs> Feels really uh, nice. So this is all... Oh yeah, I have to weave my... I was still waiting for this rope to thaw. It's just a little bit too far from the... Uh, 
fire, I'll move it closer and get that thawed out and finish the roof. And then, oh yeah, this, this was surprisingly comfortable when we slept on it. Um, it uh, needs to get re-leveled. It's not super level right now. And then uh, the tarp needs to go on the roof after I lace it. And then, if the canvas is still good, it needs to get dried out and then skirted at the back to block the breeze and help to reflect, reflect heat. But uh, it's a pretty cool little spot. It's definitely been uh, a learning experience though. If you watch somebody build a shelter on uh, on a video or on a TV show and you think it's easy, you have another another thought coming. It's a lot of work. Especially if you're just uh, hand cutting everything. Hand cutting and hauling. It takes a lot of time. Mostly thought out, so we'll lace the roof back up again as it was before but this time it's anchored better and hopefully that makes the difference Make a hair pound. There's lots of good bait here for them. These birch trees. If hares could climb, they'd be up there eating all the little branches. So what we'll do is cut one down and bring it down for them. And here is a here's a hair trail right here. Um, there's lots of good dead spruce and balsam in there to frame a hair and this dense habitat in here they really prefer that and then you know we've got like we could just make it right out in this open spot it might be ideal we'll wait for Chris to uh, come up with the sled all right we're gonna make a hair pound as you've never seen it. <laughs> and it is going to be best displayed via high speed musical montage, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of digging. Yes. 
Dead hand. What my thumb? <laughs> so Jeremy's itching to go. He's got the the finesse tool. Yeah. So we get this little shovel. Um, Princess Auto. Yeah. It looks yeah. handy. Yeah. Like you literally just bought everything for this trip there. Kind of. Yeah. From Princess Auto. Got the rat traps. Uh, the snare wire. Yeah. The snare wire too. I think had it right. And uh, that shovel I bought a while, a while back. Um, yeah, so we got to hollow this thing out enough so that we can make our tunnel because the base is going to go in there. And we probably want the walls to be as thin as possible without obviously collapsing because, well, we I don't know, maybe we don't. Maybe it doesn't matter. But I don't we, think we, we want need that too thin. We need that smell to kind of come through the, the hallways here because ordinarily this would kind of be all open space. Those rabbits better not jump on top of there. <laughs> They're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wink, yeah. jump right in. <laughs> It'd be funny if they do. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Big epic fail. Yeah. That we're gonna have to be <clears throat> concerned. <laughs> you just flick it on my shovel? Yeah. <laughs> Getting nervous. Oh, we're good. Feels pretty packed though, eh? Yeah. The middle is going to be packed, more packed than the outside because yeah, it's that's got where the weight is. Yeah. And right down the bottom here. We should make pre-made pre -made tunnels that we make, bury, and then you just pull out. Just bring ABS. Yeah, or like, or just put firewood in and then yoink it out, <laughs> like a stove pipe. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make a tunnel carver. Just in case you never watched a single one of the other snowing videos, you just make a loop, take off a length, you can guess how long, don't guess too short because then your snare is no good. And you wait you're too long, then you have fewer snares in your loop. This, um, that's just copper. I think it's 20 gauge, right, Jer? They call it 20 or 22. Yeah. Anyway, there's a specific gauge, and you make sure your snare is legal where you live. It is legal for anybody in Ontario, north of the French River, as long as you have a small game. I'm just running it on my knee here to kind of preload it. That'll make it into a loop, a nice smooth loop. And then we just go through the eyelet we just made. And then I like to over, over close it because what happens is then that loads it. So it wants to, wants to go back. I didn't do it. I didn't do it properly. Now when you hit it, it should close, just like that. So that's called loading it. And then if it wants to go on its own, then uh, you can make a little kink there. And then you just put it on top of the kink, and then when the hair hits it, then it closes. Just a little bit, not much. You don't need much. Just, it just touches it and it closes, and then the hair does the rest of the work when it pulls on it, because it's gonna pull on its chest. And you won't make it too big, I do fist, and I do fist off the bottom. Now I want to set it right in the middle of the trail here. So what I do is kind of eyeball it where I want it. The hair's not going to go through here because it's a slope. So I don't know if you can see that's kind of concave here. So it's going to go it's going to fall down to the lowest part and then go through. So then we want it to be put the right height and we can play around with that after. 
take some of the slack out, but kind of like that would be good. And then we're just going to give it a couple of wraps here. If my thing is too long, I'm in the way. Get rid of that. twigs and throw them in there so they smell good. Yeah. I think that's the idea. Because they're all coated in ice. We had an ice storm not long ago. Uh, Christmas Day, actually. snares or is it just kind of a one and done I don't bother no I tried and I just find it's just like for the effort it takes and it gets all tangled up and yeah probably should but well I think like the common wisdom is that once you catch a hair in a snare it's kind of the end for that wire yeah Three, three bucks for a roll, yep. but I go through a roll every time I go out. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's still three bucks, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you set a yeah. snare and you don't catch a hair, you can reuse that one many times. Yeah. Until you catch a hair, then it's like toast, right? <clears throat> We're gonna snip some of these ones that are hanging over the edge. good so there it is got a hole in the middle calling to get the uh, hairy donut for hairs and traps around the outside got four camera over there on the tree camera over there camera there so there's the theater and all those cameras those are uh, those are Chris's so if you want to see that footage just pop over to his channel any activity will surely be caught on those and uh, educate us a little bit about what happens so two snares each I'm gonna go spark that fire up while you're wrapping oh, up yeah, okay. And uh, Idea. I'll see you over there. Okay, sounds good. Won't be long. Okay. That's the birch that we cut down for the uh, twigs. So I'm going to come back and saw that up into little firewood sized pieces. Chris has been uh, stewing up a squirrel that he trapped with some wadobo. We'll probably have a bite of that for our supper. Make sure our fire is still going. These, these big logs are really holding some fire in there, so that's good.
should adjust my camera. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can see my fantastic hat. And I'm going to go set two rat traps for squirrels. Let's open these up. Very, very handy to have whether you want to keep squirrels out of your attic, rats out of your barn, mice out of your prepper pantry, or children out of your Christmas chocolate. It works for all those things. I'm telling you, kids break their fingers trying to get Christmas chocolate, they don't go back for seconds. So, if you are at all familiar with a mouse trap, then you also know how to use a rat trap. And they are very, very effective. They are most effective in a, in a box set. So you basically have like a shoe box with a hole in it. You set this inside. Um, and that way it keeps birds and, and other creatures out. And it really, really just atta uh, attracts or captures rodents and the odd weasel. I brought some of my survival peanut butter up. Just smear it on the pan. You can also wire a walnut on there if you were using these to catch pigeons in a barn. I don't even know if that's legal, but I've heard of people just gluing corn to the top of the trap and then just leaving it set. Eventually they step on it, peck it or whatever, and they say it's a good way to get rid of pigeons in a barn. Peanut butter. All right. Brand new springs on this one. Don't want to uh, snap your finger. So that one's ready. And what I'm going to do with it is actually put it under under here. Hey, Chris. Don't don't reach underneath here. <laughs> no. No. And I feel like that's the perfect spot for a curious squirrel to be after we've been hanging around here and getting our stink all over the place. So that's a good spot. And we'll go put one. We're gonna find a good loggy kind of a spot for one. sure if Chris came down here to set traps already or if he just came to get water. I think he just came to get water. Uh, if he did, he went the wrong way, that's all. So here are, oh, it's a, it's a grouse track. There's a grouse track in the snow here, and it stayed over here long enough to have a poop. Well, that's cool. So my next squirrel set, I'm going to do one under the log. So typically with uh, Squirrels, you see them running over or running under. And I think if I put it under, that pretty much eliminates the chance that it's going to get covered in snow. Can't put it there because I don't have enough clearance for the trap to snap. This is the same problem you run into. Uh, with box sets also. You have to make sure when you build your box that it is the right size because um, when this snaps this wire has to come up and over right so you need four inches of clearance over the top. Just a 
couple quick, quick sets. Try our luck with squirrels. I have better luck catching them in my woodshed than anywhere else. But, uh, might as well brought them out. Might as well use them. Right, trap set. Uh, we did eat some squirrel stew with wadobo spice. It was very good. Um, and it's going to be dark soonish. So got the, got the tarp on, weighed it down, tied the top corners. Um, kind of cleaned this up a little bit. I think the canvas might be done, but if it's not done, maybe I'll bring some nails tomorrow and we'll nail up the skirt there. Uh, that one trap, one trap underneath for a squirrel, one over under the logs, and I'm just going to tidy up and we'll check back in bright and early. We'll be up here checking traps and then uh, cooking some more wild food at the bushcraft camp. Four times repaired or three times repaired or whatever it's going on. Morning. It's a toque morning. It's just about sunrise. There are boats. Yeah. Getting there. Yeah. So we're heading back to check on our tracks and things and I noticed uh, that porcupine trail that was kind of obscured yesterday because of the fresh snow <clears throat> is fresh. Including newly eaten bark on the bottom of this tree. And it looks like he climbed this tree. I don't know if he ate anything up there, but there's all like a mess underneath it. Same thing over here. Porcupine tracks. Oh, he had one one bite. Probably just taste testing the trees. Oh, there he is. Something again. He's he's in the culvert. Told you he was in the culvert. Well, he is, he is today. He wasn't yesterday. Hey, buddy. There's some survival food. He doesn't look too happy about it. Big, big fat porcupine. Cool. Is he just sitting down like a dog? <laughs> well, that's fun to see. We've cooked one of those guys before. So the uh, porcupine tracks are almost always, uh, they're waddlers, right? So they waddle as they walk. And because of the way their quills stick out so far, they almost always leave this trough through the snow. Now, they're not great at walking through the snow, so they also tend to use the same paths over and over and over and they don't go anywhere special to pee you'll just find pee spots along their trail well porcupine's a pretty cool start to the day our broth is frozen from yesterday so our first order of business is going to be a fire and I'm not going to build it quite the same way as last time because we already have a base. There's no snow on the base. So we'll move our pot holder out of the way so it doesn't get burnt. Picked up some burnt bark. And I gathered on the way. And I just have to go get that big double handful of twigs. Yeah. Nothing in my one trap. We'll uh, go have a look at that other trap and then go and uh, check the Igloo. Killing igloo. Never before seen on YouTube. Um, and this trap under the log is also unsprung, so I guess there was not, not a lot of rodent activity last night except for the giant rodent 
porcupine that we saw. Okay, so when I'm looking for twigs, I'm basically looking for these dead, small balsam branches. So I'm gonna pick a whole big bunch of those. get some more twigs and might as well check that hair pound while I'm at it. I think this is over here. These are fresh tracks here from last night though. Hair tracks. So there's one around for sure. And when we came out uh, yesterday, these are fresh. It had just finished snowing. So <clears throat> I think I mentioned it was pretty impossible to tell how much activity there had been. But today, we know that all of the tracks that we see are fresh from yesterday. And as I suspected, there are a lot of hair tracks. There's lots of hair, hair activity. Um, even it looks like they, uh, where we cut down this tree to get branch ends, it looks like they've been all around here having a big sniff they probably could smell those cut branches see that branch over there the hairs were bouncing around on that too okay that's enough for a tinder okay. to protect our board here Got fire going? Yeah. Get some cooking coals. Cooking coals. Oh, okay. There's our, our stew's a little bit, uh, a little bit rock solid there too. So that's the trick, trick and tribulation of uh, winter stuff. Is everything freezes and then you can't process it. So yeah, I don't know how the trappers used to do that. I imagine they would pull like a beaver right out of the water and like process it right away. Otherwise, they'd have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of beavers to carry <coughs> around and, and nothing to yeah. eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they would have to have like some kind of camp set up and like do it right beside the fire. Or, yeah. Yeah. Because if it was like minus 25 or something, it would just be. Yeah, like, I don't know how would, they dealt with all, all those frozen animals. It would be an interesting. Uh, so they just of history. had a big, like a firewood pile outside that's all frozen animals, and then as they thaw in the spring, they just work as fast as they can. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the early trappers wouldn't have had camps. And then obviously just, they made camp. Just little little yeah. cabins not much bigger than this, I think, right? Yeah. Like just enough to yeah. get by. It was a tough life for them. Yeah. Well it's not easy to heat a space, right? So smaller is better. This uh has been a real trial, this bushcraft fort. I think this is the third time that I've uh repaired or, or rebuilt it basically from like completely fallen in. Um but uh, at least I've learned something about it every time that I've done it. So next time I want to build one from scratch, have a better design right from the get-go. Um, so this one's, this one's not bad. Could have the fire a little bit closer. You don't put that uh, skirt around the back wall. Um, I have one side. One side wall is standing, but the other one had fallen in. So that has to be rebuilt as well. Holes are all there on the ground. I saved them all, but it's not looking terrible. You hear the ravens talking? I was just thinking I, uh, I had a memory. When I was a kid, I'd sometimes go snowshoeing with my dad. I think sometimes my mom was just like, get that little terror out of the house. And we'd go snowshoeing and my dad would just limb trees. He just loved to limb trees. Take all those little side branches off. You know, meanwhile I'd just be standing there shivering until I could hardly feel my fingers and I'd complain. And, uh, 
never really understand or understood what the appeal was of living the trees. Uh, I totally get it now in a way that I still don't get it, but it's a very uh, satisfying activity. You know, it's uh, you know, something about using an axe, being outside, and uh, that feeling of productivity, even though I'm not really sure what it is that you're accomplishing, but anyway, I do also get a lot of satisfaction from burning up all the brush. That was another one of my dad's uh, favorite activities. But all this brush, all the branches that are left after you cut up a tree. Love burning big bonfires. Which is pretty much what I'd be doing right now if we weren't cooking on the stove. Do I really disappear in my, in my camouflage? I like this jacket. Pants. Cool how the, the tail was just like splitting and popping. Just brought a beaver tail in case we didn't catch one. There, Chris took the skin off, so that's just the the tail of the beaver. I don't know if it's just all gonna render and drip off, or uh, if it's gonna hold some of its form. Smoking away though. That's probably done. That must be almost an hour of boiling, eh? Simmer, boil, simmer, boil. Yeah, except for the rabbit. Like the rabbits kind of just went in at oh, the end. Oh yeah. Eh? This is a uh, already been eaten beaver tail. Already <laughs> been eaten because. Uh, the BC? It was, yeah, already been chewed. <laughs> it's really good. It got like crispy on the outside. Just put some adobo on it. <laughs> and it's like uh, creamy fat in the middle. That looks like a mouse. It does. <laughs> it's not a very big squirrel. <laughs> no, it's not a very big one. I would eat this again for sure. Here you go. The butsicle. Huh. Squirrel. Oh, I just got all the skin. <laughs> the outside crispy. All the crisp. I just put that in there. You could. Yep. Rip, fatten it up a little bit. Maybe that's the ticket. Huh? Come some more later. So we didn't actually catch a beaver. What else is there? It's a hair leg. Leg of hair? Yeah, so that one that might not be tender yet. That's the hair, but probably there's a. Uh, Leftover squirrel bits in there. I don't know, do we eat all the squirrel? Should be another another piece of squirrel in there. Eh? Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna show my people this. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Did a lot of work you, for this. You see me eat hair. It's good. <laughs> it's good? Yeah. It's not not quite rubber. It's not very rubbery anyway. And when did we build this the first time? Three years ago? 
Yeah, I think this is its third winter. Tripods, they've been hanging on for three years. They're still pretty sturdy, but they uh, definitely have some mushrooms in them. Looks pretty good. So I will be back up here. I'm gonna do a couple checks, uh, see how that key glue, the hair pound, works out over the next couple of days. The kill glue. Kill glue. We gotta figure out the pronunciation key glue? on it. Kill glue. I have a, still have a trap under there, uh, one under the log, so I'll check on those each day as well. Uh, you're leaving your squirrel traps up? Yep. Yeah, see how they, so we'll see how they pan out over time. So it's mostly a wrap for the main part of the video. Hope you enjoyed the campfires and the chopping and the trapping and the whatever else. Um, but I will uh, pop up a couple more updates anyway, and I'll catch you on the next one.